Hey, hello, and welcome to Michael's Minty Music for today. Today we review Queen's 1975 album, A Night at the Opera. It's good. Uh, there are some songs here that are really great, uh, but overall, as an album, it's probably just more on the, the good side. Not leaning towards great, but uh, not there, in my opinion, as an album. This is the track listing, and these are the tracks I added to my playlist. 5 out of 12, just one under half. This album is probably a bit better than it appears based on this. Even though I don't, uh, I didn't grab the majority of the songs, the good ones here are, are really great. And the album as a whole still flows pretty well. Side 1 uh, is really good, and Side 2 isn't particularly uh, bad. Uh, there's a kind of musical contrast here between sort of hard rock songs and more... Um, opera-esque, you know, uh, music hall, weird sort of progressive rock stuff. It seems that they took the name of the album relatively seriously. It kind of does sound like a, a, a night at an opera with a wide variety of styles that don't sound super out of place next to each other. So overall, it's kind of this interesting mix of a bunch of different sounds that generally works pretty well. And when it works well, it works really great. And when it doesn't work well, it's just okay. So it kind of ends up meeting in the middle there as an album. Uh, there's only one single released before the album, which was the biggest track here, Bohemian Rhapsody, which is one of Queen's most popular songs, probably one of their most, probably their most well-known. Um, the other big tracks of this album are You're My Best Friend and I'm In Love With My Car. Um, probably... Those are the ones I, I recognize the most, although Love of My Life is also a big one. My favorite song, although I like the three big the three big tracks I just mentioned, um, You're My Best Friend and I'm In Love With My Car are both, are both really good. I've recently taken a, a liking to the sixth track, Sweet Lady. It's pretty hard rock. It sounds just unique enough to put it over the top uh, on this album in terms of like compared to a lot of their other music. It's just got a little bit of, like, uniqueness to it that makes it a little bit different than some of their, their other harder rock. So, so I really like that one right now. Although, with this kind of album, you could easily switch your favorite uh, to a different track. A lot of these tracks are, are really... <laughs> the good ones are really good, in my opinion. Now, I rank this album 7th out of Queen's 15 albums, so at the bottom, uh, the last one in the top half. This album is definitely carried by its great songs, but it's not that bad even without those songs. So it ends up kind of in the middle range. There are definitely Queen albums that I think are better, and there are definitely uh, some that are worse. Overall, this album is one of those albums that would be in the top sort of ranking for another artist. But because this is Queen and they have like three or four just amazing albums, this album kind of gets stuck towards the middle instead because, you know, it has some stuff that's only just okay instead of, <laughs> you know, everything being good like on some of their other albums. Uh, although, additionally, this album doesn't take my top spot from 1975. That goes to Pink Floyd's uh, Wish You Were Here which I think comes together as an album a lot better. And it has a similar amount of great tracks as A Night in the Opera. They're kind of pretty close to each other. Wish You Were Here doesn't blow uh, A Night at the Opera out of the water by any sort of stretch of the imagination. But I do think that I Wish You Were Here is one of Pink Floyd's sort of best albums. And um, I think I like it a bit better than A Night at the Opera. Next up is Led Zeppelin's 1975 album, Physical Graffiti. It's a double album, uh, so it's going to have a lot of stuff on it, and it should be pretty interesting to review. So stay tuned for that, and as always, stay minty.